Can we, you and I, huh? you and I, blame our DNA for our levels of fat? How big is the role of our genes in influencing our body weight? If we don't answer any of those questions, then you can like this video. I don't. I don't think that's how this works. They should dislike the video if you don't help them. But I, I want them to like the video. I want them to subscribe and love me forever. We're four seconds into this video and you're already on bullshit. First off, genes are hilarious. You and I are walking around with the same genetic information. 99% of our genes are the exact same. That difference is that 1%. That's what makes us all unique. We all have eyes, but some of us have green eyes. We all have hair, but some of us have nappy hair. That 1% is also where the predisposition to disease comes in. Med9 Plus says genetic predisposition is an increased likelihood of developing a particular disease based on a person's genetic makeup. You see what I did there? I put a woman it's uh she's it's a meme it's genetic i put make okay you don't got to be a master in dna you got two parents and both of them had an impact in who you are now logically speaking that if you had an obese parent then the hypothesis is that you have a higher chance of becoming obese what does the science say? Many studies, including many researchers and many participants took obese people and non-obese people, audited their DNA and essentially found the common genes that obese people had. Now, before we get into that, we have to pause here for a sec. What does it mean to look at the common gene of obese people? Because it isn't as straightforward as it sounds. Genes hold information to make protein. These proteins operate as tools that go on into the body and perform almost every function. I need you to really get that. I need you to understand that. If your barber uses clip, then the clippers are the protein. The protein performs a function. The function is to cut hair. In the perfect world, that process goes on swimmingly and we'd all have perfect health. But we don't live in a perfect world. Certain diseases are caused by what we call gene variants. Remember, we essentially all have the same genes, but certain diseases develop when a certain gene decides it wants to act out. It's not the gene that causes the disease, but it's the variant of the uh, gene that causes the disease. If the gene that made the barber's clippers was a different variant, say bogus clippers, then it's gonna perform a different function. Good clippers can perform a good haircut. Bad clippers perform a bad haircut. Still clippers, still the same protein, different function. Monogenic obesity is a rare form of obesity that comes from the variation of a single gene. Chances are you probably don't have that gene variation, so we're gonna really dive into common obesity. Now, common obesity, hear me clearly, common obesity isn't caused by a single gene. It's what we call a multifactorial condition, meaning it's caused by many contributing factors. Now that that's clear, back to the science. I ran into a bit of an issue. Obesity is defined by BMI. BMI is defined by kilograms over a meter squared. It doesn't look at any physiological processes going on in the body. It just looks at our height and our weight. It doesn't look inside the body at all. And it takes height and weight and determines if we're a normal weight or not. Now, if you ask me, BMI can go play in traffic. But to give the conversation a bit more fairness, I took it to Dr. Google to see if anyone was actively head over heels for BMI. The mass opinion says BMI has its place, but it's probably more harmful than helpful to hang your hat on as the end all be all. I came across an interesting list of reasons why BMI doesn't serve as much purpose as we believe. It ignores waist size, a clear indicator of obesity. It disregards the relative proportions of bone, muscle, and fat. I like number seven. It suggests there are distinct categories of underweight, ideal, overweight, and obese with sharp boundaries up to the decimal point. Allow me to flash you with the BMI chart real quick. Viewer discretion is advised. If you watched any previous Fat Lab episodes, you know that obesity is a hormonal disorder, point blank period. However, BMI is convenient and stupid easy to measure. Take a look at this study. Look at all these researchers. Let me tell you something. I look at a lot of research. This is a lot of mud for us. They took hundreds of thousands of people and found genes associated with that one thing, that dreaded BMI. Not just this study, but many, many more. So we got the data. We got the genes most associated with people being obese. But those genes are based on a classification of people in the BMI. And as we just seen, BMI is kind of lazy. And I struggled. I wasn't sure if I wanted to share the actual genes associated with obesity because I didn't want to focus on the minutia. Because look at this. A GWA is a genome-wide association study. And it's the primary way we go about finding genes related to obesity. It's accurate and it's going to find some genes, but it does very little to tell us what those genes actually do. The connection between these genes and obesity is poorly understood as a statement from 
from this study points out. It's kind of like when you work in a job and you're pretty good at it, but then your manager comes along and tries to add a little something to your plate. You say, wait a minute, this ain't in my job description. That's what GWA studies are saying. We can find the genes, but we can't explain the connection. That same study states that common obesity is polygenic with no observable Mendelian inheritance pattern, meaning these genes aren't as simple as one, two, three, then obesity. They're more like one, two, X, hashtag, dollar sign, 45, Okay, now you got obesity. GWAs are newer science. They were developed in 2005, and the biggest stride we made associating genes with obesity was made in 2007. So this is this is new territory. You know how they say one year of human life is like multiple years of a dog's life? Science is the complete opposite. It can take decades for research to become public knowledge or be implemented, or even to make a definitive claim. Meaning every one of these gene obesity association studies say the same thing at the end. We've made great strides with these discoveries and understanding the genes associated with obesity. However, we're still in the early works of understanding the science. Hopefully future work can give us a better understanding of how these genes play a role. It's kind of like when you give your homegirl advice and then you say, hey, that's just my opinion. So, you know, when stuff hits the fan, it's not your fault. So kudos to you. You're now on the early side of science, except you still don't know which genes have an influence and how big is that influence? Can we blame our parents? At least a little bit? Find out.